Judges chapter 11. Let me read verse 13, 29 to 31, and uh, 39 and 40. So, verse 29. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah, and he passed over Gilead and Manasseh, or passed over Mispe of Gilead, and from Mispe of Gilead he passed over unto the children of Ammon. And Jephthah bowed about unto the Lord, and said, If thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Ammon into mine hands, then it shall be that whosoever cometh forth from of the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the children of Ammon shall, shall surely be the Lord's and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. Verse 39 And it came to pass at the end of two months that she returned unto her father unto her Father who did with her according to his vow, which she had vowed, and she knew no man, it was a custom in Israel, that the daughters of Israel went yearly to lament the daughter of Jephthah, no, the Gileadite, four days in a year. May the Lord bless his words again. So, in this chapter, mga kapatid, I, uh, the Lord raised another uh, judges in Israel after uh, the <clears throat> pagkatapos ni uh, Abimelech. Okay, so hindi lang pala si meron pang si uh, yeah, yung, yung after ng mga judges no, na sumunod kay Abimelech. So, Jephthah is uh, ang background ni Jephthah ay isa naman siyang uh, Gileadite no, and he is a mighty man of power. And he was the son of a harlot. Okay? So, alam niyo ba ang ibig sabihin ng harlot? Harlot ay isang babaeng bayaran. Isang a strange woman. Si Jepta ay isang anak ng uh, strange woman. Okay? Ibig sabihin, walang asawa na permanente kahit sino pwede maging asawa depende sa uh, sitwasyon at presyo so ito yung mga babaeng uh, nagbayaran uh, no? and nung siya ay ipanganap si Jepta ay he was cast out no, of his family verse 2 and Gilead's wife bear him sons, and his wife's sons grow up, and they trust out Jephthah, and said unto him, Thou shalt not inherit in our father's house, for thou art the son of a strange woman. And Jephthah fled with his brethren, uh, fled from his brethren, and dwelt in the land of Tu. And there were gathered vain men to Jephthah, and went out with him. Noon no, siya ay lumayas sa kanyang pamilya, ay nagsama siya ng mga vain men. Alam mo yung mga vain men? Yung mga, uh, kumbaga, mga patapon, mga outcast, yung mga, mga tao. So, katulad niya, na siya ay uh, outcast, no? siya ay tinuring na mababang uri ng tao, ay nag, lumaya sila at may mga kasama siya. However, 
uh, they were mighty men of valor. Kung sabing mighty men, mga makikisig sila. Mga makikisig, mahupusok, mga mandrigma, malalakas. No? Very strong men. So, nagpakalayo-layo sila. And they said unto Jephthah, Come! No? And they are captain. Sana yan. So, yes, yeah, so verse 4 muna. And it, and it came to pass, in a process of time, that the children of Ammon made war against Israel. And it was so, when the children of Ammon made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to fetch Jephthah out of the land of Tum. Out of Tum. So, uh, sa, sa paglipas ng panahon, no, ay itong uh, mga Amon, Amonites, ay nagset ng war against Israel. At wala silang mahanap na na pwedeng na makikas na pwedeng maglig no, para lumakas yung kanilang loob and uh, napag-isip-isip ng mga elders mga officials kasi um, Israelites meron silang mga elders no, ang elders yan yung mga uh, kumbaga mga namumuno okay, mga lupon no, para mga parangay uh, captain kapitan ng kanilang tribo. Sabi nila, hindi natin kakayanin ko. At may naisip nila, kailangan natin si Jepta. Jepta ay uh, isang ma, matikas na lalaki. So, what they did, and they said unto Jepta, come, pinuntaan nila si Jepta, and be our captain that we may fight with the children of Ammon. So, inukonvince sila si Jephthah na maging captain nila. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, Did you not hate me? And expel me out of my father's house? Sabi niya gano'n, Di ba kinakamuhian niyo ako? Di ba galit kayo sa akin? Di ba ayaw niyo ako? Di ba pinuturin niyo akong mababang klase ng tao? And why are you come unto me now when you are in distress? Tapos ngayon, bakit kayo yung kasakin na kayo ay in distress? Kayo ay uh, nalalagay sa alangan? Bakit kayo lapit sa akin? Okay. Tama naman, di ba? May point naman si Jepta. Talaga maging tanong niya eh. O, di ba? Kailan na? kung kailan na uh, kailangan nyo lang ako di ba? may pakinabang lang kayo sa akin doon lang kayo palapit hindi kayo naawa sa akin ano mo, di ba? that's a kind of no, it's a normal sentiment of somebody of someone being cast out no, isipin natin it, it's really happening and it happens in real life no, nangyayari din ito sa totoong buhay. It's not just a story of some object, but it happens across so many people, even up to date, even up to our time. No? Do you have, do you, can you relate the feeling of being outcast? At outcast? Are you able to relate the feeling of being outcast? nakaramdam ba kayo na outcast kayo? Di ba? Parang na out of place ka. Di ba? Actually, the feeling of being open or out of place is simple than the feeling of being outcast. This is a direct in, uh, direct in vocal uh, dislike to Jephthah. Talagang vocal na ayaw namin sa iyo. Wala kang party dito. Hindi ka wala kang karapatan sa pamilya na ito. Wala kang karapatan sa ating uh, sa sa ating lahi. Alam mo 'yon kung 
you are kilala ka sa pamilya, famous, di ba? You have a good standing, family, name, respected, at sabihin sa iyo, you have no part of this. You are ashamed to this family. Sino din masasaktan nun, right? At talagang, uh, mag- pwede kang mag-rebelde sa ganong klase ng, ano, ano ba kasalanan na dyan ka? Yes, he is a son of a strange woman. Woman. Di ba? Pero ano ba ang kasalanan niya doon kung naging anak siya ng isang bayang babae? Okay? And this is not the first uh, scenario in uh, hindi ito uh, this is not a unique scenario in the Bible uh, sa, sa Biblia. No? Maraming And after this, maraming mga sumunod na ganun din ang kalagayan. Even before. Diba? Ganyan din ang naramdaman ni naramdaman ni Ismael. Kailan nyo si Ismael? Ismael is a son of is a, uh, a son of Abraham. Diba? A son of Abraham to Hagar. Hagar. Hagar is yung handmaid ni Sarah. No? So, he was, uh, kaya may mga Ismailites masama yung kanilang loob eh. sa mga Israelites. Masama yung kanilang loob sa tribe sa kaila uh, Jacob. Di ba? Uh, nila, ah, kaila uh, ang tawag ito kay sino ba yun? Si Isaac. Okay. So, makita niyo mga kapatid. No. But, the Lord promised to Ishmael. To the daughter of Hagar. No. Pero nangako din ang Panginoon sa kanila, sa kanila na they will be prosperous. Okay. So, God is not unfair. Although man can be unfair. Even a religious man, a religious person can be can do a wrong uh, judgment to somebody or magiging unfair. Siya pwede. It is really possible. And it's really, it, it's actually happened. So, even happened sa mga krisyano, mga kapatid. Kaya, itong nangyari kay Jepta, No, Jephthah was a victim of man's uh, self-righteousness. No, victim was siya ng, ng uh, pagiging uh, self-righteous ng tao. Jephthah is a victim of man's standard. No, may mga standard kasi tayo eh, ng tao. Okay. So, kung titignan natin, mga kapatid, ay, it is a normal expression o normal uh, reaction of Jephthah towards the elders of Israel or Gilead. In verse 8, And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, Therefore return again to thee now, that thou mayest go with us and fight against the children of Ammon and fight and be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. So, ang offer ngayon ng mga elders kay Jephthah is sumama ka lang sa amin, be our captain and you will be the head all over the inhabitants of ba? Sabi ni dating outcast ngayon naging, naging head. Dating outcast ngayon ay naging captain. Dating outcast ngayon ay one of the official, no? O- officer ng isang lugar. What a uh, uh, ang tawag dito, what a promotion that will be para kay Jephthah. Nakita niyo mga kapatid. The situation leads Jephthah to be 
promoted from his that very low position. No. <clears throat> Minsan, ganyan din sa buhay natin. That's why you should not be worried. You should not be you should not worry so much about somebody or being down by men being turned down by some by the people around you no marami mga tao na you will be looked down kaya wala mararating niya ah mahinang klase okay Sometimes we are judged of uh, our personality, of our future. We're uh, judged by some uh, part of our weaknesses or some part of our diba, yung mga low points. Halimbawa, hindi lang tayo marunong mag, masyado mag-English sasabihin lang sa'yo, sabihin na sa'yo, wala ka ng video. Di ba? O kaya, hindi, hindi, parang utal-utal ka magsalita, sabi, ah, wala na ang video to, magihirap to. Ito na ang dami naman hindi marunong mag-English, mayaman eh. Maunlad, at maraming nagagawa. Hindi lang naman kasi, hindi naman kasi, English language ang basihan ng pagiging ng iyong future at ng iyong pagkatao. Tayo mga Pilipino or tayo mga tao, we have we set our own standards no? at ganun tayo ka-perfectionist but in reality, the more we we set to be perfect or to be, the more we uh, maging perfect ay the more we are being perfect. Because we cannot really, the standard of God is not the same with our standard. Sabi nga ng Panginoon, di ba? God chose the base things of this world to confound the wise. Alam niyo? The things that are despised, sabi ng Panginoon. Yung mga despised daw, yun ang ano ng Panginoon eh. Yun ang pinipili ng Panginoon. Yun ang kinu- kinukuha ng Panginoon yung mga despised. Alam, look at the despised things around you. And God will use that to rebuke or to turn down the mighty things or the mighty man, the mighty idea that man set in his world. Tinan nyo si Abimelech. Hindi na tayo lalayo sa example. Abimelech is a wicked man. No? Very strong. <clears throat> But what he did, no? he was defeated by a woman. Di ba? Walang makatalo sa kanya kahit hari, kahit no? minamalit niya. Pero, ano nangyari sa kanya? Tinalo lang siya ng isang babae. Tinulugan lang siya ng bato. No? Patay na. Ngayon, gusto niya pa sanang i-claim yung glory niya. Sabi niya sa kanyang servant, Patay, let your sword draw to me. Draw your sword to me. That, I, that, no, that they may not know that I was beaten by a woman. <laughs> sabi nung no, no kanyang servant, Ayun ko nga. Because God said him to die by the hand of a woman. No? To, alam mo yun, yung, yung kanyang kayabangan at yung pag-set niya na ang lalaki ang yung kanyang katigas na pagiging macho, matigas ay ang Panginoon na ang nag-set na wala. Okay? So mga kapatid, lagi nating tandaan ang uh, mga prinsipyo na yan. No? It is very obvious in the scripture that man's standard is not as very far from the ways of God. No? Sometimes, that you disappoint tayo 
because it does not meet our standard. But did we consider the Lord's will? And as long as we are not disobeying the Lord, whatever how how you how do we for uh, paano man natin nasunod o ginawa ang Panginoon based on our ability no let us not uh, wag natin i-assume na yung standard mo ay yun yung standard ng Panginoon yes God uh, as a uh, may mataas sa standard ng Panginoon pero wag natin masyadong uh, literal na ang standard ng Panginoon kailangan magaling mag-English, kailangan uh, alam mo yung magaling manalita o whatever. Sabi nga ng Panginoon, pag kayo pinatawag sa mga ipapatawag kayo sa mga litisan, sabi nga, huwag kayo maghahanda ng inyong sasabihin doon, sapagkat ako ang maglalagay ng mga sasalitain ninyo. Diba? When you go the, when you go somewhere do not bring anything. Diba pinalakad niyo yung mga disciples, wala kayong dadalhin ng kahit ano, umayo kayo. Okay? Because I will feed you. Sabihin mo na maglilingkod ka sa Panginoon, it's not your standard but the the, the standard of God. And serving the Lord, no, I hindi po siya nakalimit doon sa may pera lang. Doon sa may pinag-aralan lang. Hindi po siya nakalimit doon. Serving the Lord does not limit to somebody who graduate in college, who have masteral degree, who have doctorate hindi po doon nakalimit yun. And sometimes, the Lord despise them. No? Nakuha niyo po yun? Sometimes, the Lord despise that kind of human standard. Ano? Sabi nga ng Panginoon, di ba? God, uh, sabi ng Panginoon niya, uh, the wisdom of this world is foolishness unto God porque graduate lang ng college ay kumakapangit doon sa mga high school graduate o elementary graduate. Okay, ganun po yung nangyayari dito. Pagka, alam niyo, pag may somebody that will look down on you, no? it means that God will, God is preparing something for you. To be in a to be a level up position, standing. Okay, was to remain humble and remain calm, submissive before the Lord. There will be a situation that God will lift you up. Let God lift you up. Then po nang yari nito kay Jephthah. He was cast out. He was forsaken. No, he was despised, but the situation calls him to be the head and the primary person of the same place that people despise him. No, kung saan masaya they despise them. Yes, the first ten and the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, "The Lord be witness between us." If we do not sow according to thy words, then Jephthah went to the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and captain over them, and Jephthah uttered all his words before the Lord in Mitzvah. So, sumama si Jephthah, of course. Sabi niya, sure kayo ah, pag ako sumama sa inyo, Talagang gagawin niya akong captain. Also, let the Lord be witness over us. Between us. So it's like they uh, they they uh, they all between God and Jephthah 
regarding this promise. Okay? So, Jephthah became the captain and head over Gilead. Kaya nagtrabaho na agad si Jephthah. In verse 12, Jephthah sent messengers unto the king of the children of Ammon, saying, What hast thou done with me? When thou art come against me to, to fight in my land. Verse 13, And the king of the children of Ammon answered unto the messengers of Jephthah, Because Israel took away my land when they come up out of Egypt and from uh, Arnon even unto Jabok and unto Jordan now therefore restore those lands again peaceably sabi ni Jephthah sa mga sa kanilang kalaban ano ba ito ginagawa niyo ngayon bakit makikipaggera kayo sa amin dito sa lugar namin bakit niyo kami gigirain what's the reason behind nagpadala ng, ng messenger si Jephthah at inaalam. Ano ba ang inyong motibo? Bakit kayo makikipaghira sa amin? No? You know what? To engage in war, you should know the motives of your enemy. You cannot engage without knowing or it's very hard to engage without knowing the motive. No? Sometimes, we have to know. Ganon sa mga milyong may nai makikipaggera sila o sige gera na tayo wala tayong pakialam sa kanila walang dapat lumaban sa atin no and you cannot really win the war if you do not know at least the motive of your enemy no sometimes it's hard to defeat the enemy without knowing the motive why they are war against you you know what? We have a spiritual wars. We have a wars even within ourselves. Mga kapatid, we have wars within. Aside from the outside war we're engaging to. We are also, we are also engaged in the wars within. In the inner war, no, at least you have you you are aware about the motives of your enemy within. Diba? Your motives mo, your motives ng kaaway mo sa sarili mo. No, we have. That's why you know. Alam niyo sabi ni Apostle Paul, yung mga bagay na gusto kong gawin, hindi ko magawa. At yung mga bagay na ayaw kong gawin, yun ang ginagawa ko. Yung mga bagay na, ayan, gusto, uh, at sabi niya, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of his death? Can you imagine, ah? Apostle Paul, one of the great apostles in the New Testament. In the book, in the New Testament book, he dominated, he, domina- he dominates, it dominates with his writings. Di ba? Nandiyan sa Acts, nandiyan na siya. Pagpasok ng Acts, nandiyan na si Apostle Paul. Acts, first ka uh, uh, Romans, first ka uh, hanggang papuntang halos Hebrews. Diba? Halos writing na ni Apostle Paul niya. But that servant, this Apostle, experience war within. An inner war that really hard to win. Eh, sabi ni Apostle Paul, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Tinatanong niya na eh, sino ang makakapagligtas sa akin sa katawan na ito ng kamatay? No. Now we're referring to two kinds of death. No. Talking about two kinds of death. But Apostle Paul is not saying about this time about physical death. Although Apostle Paul nag-struggle din siya sa kanya 
physical health. But it's just a uncomfortable situation, but not as the dying, like Apostle Paul mentioned, na who shall deliver me from the body of his death. When you are with your inner war struggling, kapag ikaw ay natatalo ng iyong laman, you feel like you're dying. You feel, you feel of being meaningless. No? Parang pakiramdam mo, hopeless ka. Your life is no, has no meaning at all. Every time you were defeated by your lust, your sinful nature. Diba? Kaya sabi ni Apostle Paul, kama, sino bang magliligtas sa akin sa kamatayan na ito? itong spiritual struggle na ito. Yung mga bagay na ayaw ko. Pag sabihin ayaw ko, it means kasalanan yun. Because during this time, Apostle Paul already born again. Apostle Paul is already serving God. And Apostle Paul already know what is what is not and what is what should, uh, ano yung bagay na Uh, hindi nakakalugod sa Panginoon. But this time, Apostle Paul struggling doing the things which does not desire of his spiritual uh, yung kanyang uh, uh, katwiran. Nagagawa niya yung mga bagay na hindi dapat. Nag-struggle siya doon. Okay? But Apostle Paul is not saying that it's okay to do the things that is sinful. Hindi niya sinabi na okay lang itong gumawa ng kasalanan. Hindi niya sinabi niya. Hindi sinasabi niya yung mga bagay na ayaw ko, yun ang nagagawa ko. Ayaw ko pero nagagawa ko. Because he is, he was no, struggling. At siya ay natatalo ng kanyang lawa. Okay. At kapag natatalo siya at nagagawa niya yung kasalanan na, na mga yan, anong nangyayari sa kanya? Nakakaramdam siya ng para siyang namamatay. Parang walang kwenta. Di ba? Faith without work is there. And parang ganon, na may faith ka, pero wala kang gawa sa katwiran, you're nothing. Di ba? What's the sense? What's the point of having faith if you are not performing it? Nakuha niyo po? Nakuha natin? Anong silbi ng pananampalataya mo kung hindi mo naman nagagawa yung pananampalataya mo? And if you are not grieving into it, you live like hypocrisy. You are living in hypocrisy. Nakuha niyo po? They have faith. You have full of knowledge. You have full of understanding about what is truth and what is lies, what is sinful and what is righteous. And you keep doing righteousness and yet you are not grieving. You are not struggling. It means you are not in war with righteousness. But you are in, with your, with, you are in the side of the enemy because you are not grieving of sins. You are happy doing it. And you appear to be righteous. You appear to be enjoying serving God like the priest, like the Pharisees and Sadducees. They are full of evil inside them. And yet they appear to be servants of God, ministering the people. But when they see Christ, they are full of envy because He was Christ has more attention than them. And it feels like, they feels like their tradition is, was being, uh, is being despised by the people and now having attention with this, diba? Despised man, Christ. San ba nang galing yan? Sabsaban nang yan. Diba? Walang sariling bahay. 
Makita nyo mga kapatid. That is hypocrisy. And inner wall is uh, a sign that you are battling with your sins. A sign that you are fighting with your sins. Apostle Paul is telling to the people, or t- telling to us, that we are engaged in war, first within, and also in outside. You cannot win the battle, the war outside, you cannot win your own battle. Now, Apostle Paul said, Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And sabi niya, I thank the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus Christ win the battle for him. Jesus Christ comforted his sorrows. No? Nagsusorrow si Apostle Paul eh, sa mga pagkakamali niya. But every time he repented, of the sins, Jesus Christ comforted him. Sinasabi ng Panginoon sa kanya, I already saved him. Now rise up from the, from downfall and serve me more. And serve me. Sabi ng Panginoon, ni Apostle Paul, ng Panginoon sa kanya, My grace is sufficient for me. Mga kapatid, hindi porke may sinful nature tayo, hindi porke meron tayong struggle sa buhay, ay hindi na tayo maglilingkod sa Panginoon. Hindi porke nagmuhabagsak tayo, ay mananatili na lang tayo nakalumok at hindi na tayo upang. That is not a true soldier. And that is not how we war against our own selves. Because aside of this inner struggle, we are also engaged in war. No? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, high rulers of darkness of this world. No? Hindi nyo ba napansin yun? Hindi nyo nakikita yun? Hindi nyo nakikita yun? Because you cannot see that with your physical eye. You can only see that with your spiritual eye. Your devotion to God, your uh, closeness to the Word of God will help you, will enlighten you, and unveil your eyes with the true enemies of this world. No, our enemies are no, nandito ang ating kaaway. They were everywhere. In technology, they were everywhere in the appearance. No, nagpapakita yan sila. No, naglalakad yan sa kali, pakimbot kembo. No, nagpapakita sa yon, display sa yon. No, attracting you. Nandyan yan sa mall, nakadisplay na kumikita kita nakakainggan nyo with a good specs better. No? Nandyan yan sa Shopee, nandyan yan sa Lazada, nandyan yan sa Facebook, nandyan yan sa social media, lahat nandyan sila. You cannot see that with your physical eye. Because your physical eye can only see the beauty of, this, of these things. But your spiritual eye can unveil that, unveil them, and see no, ito ang totoong kaaway natin. Because these things will, uh, kapag ka nagkamali ka at nada, natalo ka nila, this will bring you to sorrow. They will bring you to sorrow and they will bring you being away to God. They will consume you. Uubusin ang panahon mo. Mawalan ka ng panahon sa Panginoon. Mahugulat ka, alauna na. Alauna na pala. Mahugulat ka, hindi ka na makatulog. Hindi ka na makatulog, puyat ka na. Tapos pag nakatulog ka, 
Anong oras na? Legal. Di ba? That's, that's really reality. Yeah. That it's really happening in all of us. Now, these are our enemies. These are wars. Kaya naman, napakaraming nakakaigan yung eh. Di ba? Mga kapatid, Jepta, uh, Jepta knows first the motive of his enemy. Inano niya, inalam niya yung motibo. Kaya, alamin din natin yung motibo natin. Motibo ng ating kaaway, mga kapatid. Identify our enemies. And let's identify and know their motive against us. Because if you know their motives, you will, you will, uh, malalaman mo how to handle these things. Han- how to handle and how to fight them. Okay? So, yan ang ginawa ni Jephtha. And the king of the children of Ammon, verse 13, answered unto messengers of Jephtha, because Israel took away my land when they came up out of Egypt from Aaron, Arnon, even unto Jabok and to Jordan, now therefore restore those lands visibly. And Jephthah, verse 4, sent messenger again unto the king of Ammon, and said unto him, The same Jephthah, Israel took not away the land of Moab, nor the land of the children of Ammon. But Israel, but when Israel came up from Egypt and walked through the wilderness unto Red Sea, and came to Kadesh. Then Israel sent messengers unto the king of Edom, saying, Let me, I pray thee, pass through my, thy land. But the king of Edom would not hearken thereto. And in like manner they sent unto the king of Moab, and he would not consent. And Israel abode in Kadesh. So this, hanggang, uh, up to 22 no hanggang 22 16 22 sinasabi diyan ni Jetta ang dahilan kung bakit nila na possess yung mga lupain na yan sinasabi nila let me enlighten you ba sinasabi ni Jetta kaya ni Jetta kaya siya nagpapadala ng messenger let me enlighten you Baka nakakalimot ka. Baka nakakalimutan mo ang history. Kaya si Jepta, aware siya sa history ng kanilang lahi. No? Kahit siya ay outcast, kahit siya ay uh, kahit siya ay despised, he is well versed of the root of their family. The root of being uh, God's people. No? Matalino siya eh. Ay, inal- alam niya kung sino sila. Okay? So, sabi niya, nung dumaan kami dito, ah, from, yung pala ang dahilan mo, no? From, dahil iniisip mo, kinamkam namin yung lupay niyo, from Egypt. So, bumabalik ka doon sa, sa mga unang panahon ka. No? Na, ang mga Israelites ay mga land grabber sila. Diba? O sige, eh, dapat malaman mo na wala naman kami intensyon i-possess yung land mo. Yung land na yan. It's not for us to possess. Okay? But sabi niya, ang sabi doon ay, nakiusap kami na kung pwede, payagan kami tumawid sa, kani- sa inyong lupain. Anong ginawa ng inyong hari? Instead na kami payagan, dinigma kami. Dinigma kami. At hindi kami makalusot. So, sabi niya, nung kami dinigma, tinulungan kami ng Panginoon. Ngayon, sabi dito, So now the Lord, verse 23, So now the Lord God of Israel had disposed the Amorites before His people Israel. Should His thou possess it? Possess it? At dahil dyan, the Lord disposed your kings, your people, your armies to us. Eh ngayon, dinispose kayo, hindi mo ba mapupossess yun? 
you will possess it. Now, sinabi dito, no, will thou not possess that which chemos thy God giveth thee to possess? So, sino ba yung Diyos ninyo? Sabi ni Jephthah. Kung yung Diyos ninyo, eh, sinabihan kayo na i-possess niya, hindi mo ba i-possess? So, whomsoever the Lord our God shall drive out, sabi ni Jephthah, verse 24, from before us, then we will possess. And now, art thou not anything better than Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab? Did he ever strive against Israel? Or did he ever fight against them? While Israel dwelt in Hishbon, and her towns, and Aror, and her towns, and in all cities that be along by the coast of Arnon, 300 years. Why did Why therefore did you not recover them within that time? Sabi niya, bakit ngayon lang kayo maniningin ulit? Bakit ngayon lang kayo magre-recover? 300 years ago na? Okay. Kung talaga ah, mahusay ka pa kay King Balak, eh bakit ngayon mo lang kami, ngayon mo lang ipoproses? So, So much for that, verse 27, Wherefore I have not seen against thee, but thou doest no, but thou doest wrong to walk against me. The Lord the judge be judge. The Lord the judge be judge this day between thee and the children, uh, the children of Israel and the children of Ammon. No, dahil matigas ang ulo, itong hari, Howbeit the king of the children of Ammon hearkened not unto the words of Jephthah, which he sent unto him. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah, and he passed over Gilead, Manasseh, and passed over Mizpah of Gilead, and Mizpah of Gilead, and passed over unto the children of Ammon. And Jephthah bowed, bowed unto the Lord, and said, If thou shalt without fail, Deliver the children of Ammon into my hands. Okay, balikan, yan, balikan natin mamaya. So verse 33, sabi nito, <clears throat> oh, verse 32, So Jephthah passed over unto the children of Ammon to fight against them. And the Lord delivered them into his hands, and he smote them from Aror, even till thou come to minute, even Twenty cities unto the plain of the vineyards with a very great slaughter. Thus the children of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. Magkita niyo po, mga kapatid. The Lord gave the children of Ammon to Jephthah. At sabi ito, it's a very great slaughter. Talagang ang hindi, no? Ang daming patay that time. So, talagang madugo. Eh, siyempre, si Jephthah, uh, bukod sa the Lord is in favor with him, eh, talagang, ano rin siya eh, uh, talagang man of valor siya eh. So, <clears throat> nagtagumpay sila, mga kapatid. Now, may kita nyo, no, from the despise position into a top position. Here you can see that when God no, uh, as sinasabi ko ang mga, kapat- mga kapatid, you cannot underestimate what God can do for somebody. Sometimes even us, we despise ourselves. Even us mismo, din- dinadjudge natin sa sarili natin ng hindi ko kaya. It is impossible for me, and I cannot be. I can never be used by God. Sometimes we don't try, or simply we don't trust ourselves. Okay, na naman yun. Hindi mo pagtiwalaan yung sarili mo. Actually, 
Pagkaiba ang aral ng Bible sa aral ng sanlibutan. Sabi ng aral ng sanlibutan, magtiwala ka sa sarili mo. Tiwala lang sa sarili yan. Lakas lang ang loob yan. No? Pero, ang sa scripture, do not, do not put your confidence before men. Huwag ka magtiwala sa tao o even sa sarili mo. Magtiwala ka sa Panginoon. At sabi ni Apostle Paul, I can do all things through Christ. So, ginagawa niya with confidence sa isang bagay dahil nagtitiwala siya sa Panginoon. Okay? So, mga kapatid, the testimony of Jephthah or the, the life of Jephthah is an example to us that even the despised person can be a great servant. Now, because in this chapter we can also see something na very troubling. No, troubling siya, no? Kasi uh, sa sobrang overwhelmed ni Joshua, meron ni Jephthah, meron siyang may pangako sa Panginoon. No. Tayo kasi bilang tao, pag overwhelmed tayo, minsan nakakapangako tayo ng no, bunga ng ating emosyon. Eh. Okay? Nangako na ba kayo sa Panginoon? Did you ever experience or did you, have you experienced to to pronounce a vow unto the Lord. Lord! Pag ako natanggap sa trabaho, pangako ko sa iyo. Nasubukan nyo na yun. Lord, pangako. Pag ako nagkasawa, pangako. Lord, pag ako Ah, uh, pag ako bumalik sa sakit pangako, hindi na ako absent sa church. Lord, pagka sinagot niya ako, pangako, Lord, talaga magpapastor na ako. Did you, did you, did you say any promising uh, vow unto the Lord? Now, sabi ng Bible, mag-ingat kayo sa pangako niya. Kasi kapag nangako ka, make sure you fulfill it. Sabi niya, huwag ka na lang mangako kung hindi mo kaya i-fulfill. So yung iba, sabi naman, eh, kaya nga hindi ako nagkukumit. Eh. Kasi ayaw ko na hindi ko matupad yung ano. Kaya pag may mga gawain, ay, ano na ako? Ayaw ko magkumit. Iba-iba, no? Nasubrahan naman yun sa walang ayaw na mag-perform, ayaw na kasi ayaw. Ayaw na magkumit. Eh, pero namang overwhelmed. It's si Jephthah overwhelmed siya. Along the way, from being a despise into a, a primary person, a leader, nasa kanya yung dati outcast, despise, pinabaliwala, a sense of, di ba, unbelong, no, uh, parang unbelong, whatever. Up to the spotlight, no, pinuntahan siya, sinuyo siya, naging captain siya, na, na pag pinagtiwalaan yung kanyang pakayanan, sinusunod siya, may messenger, may army siya, he is in command, at talagang, sabi niya, Lord, ibigay mo lang po sa akin. Ayan na yan, ito na yung bawa niya, sa verse 29. Then the Spirit of the Lord came unto Jephthah, and, and he passed over Gilead, and Manasseh, and passed over Mesbe of Gilead, and from Mesbe of Gilead, he passed over unto the children of Ammon. And Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord, and said, If thou shalt without pagay mo sa akin yung children of Ammon, at pagbalik na pagbalik ko sa bahay ko, kung sino yung unang sasalubong sa akin sa pinto, sa'yo yun, Lord. Sa'yo yun, Panginoon, sa'yo yun. I will offer it with a burnt offering. Ang tindi ng pangano, ano, no? Pangako niya, tayo, ang tindi ng commitment niya, sino mang sumanubong sa akin sa harap ng aking bahay, iyo offer ko sa iyon with a burnt sacrifice. No? 
that time that he bowed, he did not meditate well. When he pronounced that bow, he did not think well. Bakit? So, nanalo sila. At umuwi na siya sa bahay niya. At pag uwi niya sa bahay niya, in verse 34, and Jephthah came to Mespe and to his house, and behold, his daughter came out to meet him with trembles and with dances. And she was his only child. Beside her, he had neither son nor daughter. Nako, pag uwi ni Jepta, ang unang sumalubong sa kanya, yung kanyang buktong na anak, na babae, nagsasayaw, nagre-rejoice, Daddy, welcome back, Daddy, congratulations. You win the war. You are despised for so long and now you are the man. No, nagsasayaw. Pag nung makita ni Jepta, naalala niya yung promise niya. And that made him low and sorrowful. Yan sabi niya. And it came to pass when he saw her that he ran this close, nagmourn siya. Pag ran this close, alam niyo, ran this close. Katulad ng ginawa ni, ni ni David. Katulad ng ginawa ni Job. They ran his clothes. Talagang no, tinapon niya yung kanila. Nag-mourn siya. Okay? <clears throat> And she, sabi dito, He came to pass when he saw it, or her, and she ran his clothes and said, I lost my daughter. Thou hast brought me very low. And thou art one of them that troubled me. For I have opened my mouth unto the Lord, and I cannot go back. Sabi niya, Oh my daughter, Ikaw ang nagpabagsak sa aking kanuapan. Ikaw ang nagbigay ngayon ng mabigat kung pasanin o damdamin. Dahil I after a voice of her, I vow unto the Lord that I cannot go back. Hindi ko pwedeng bawiin. You see that? Because Jephthah is a man of valor. Jephthah is a man of principle. Jephthah is a man of words. He even cost his life. Alam niyo kung buhay niya lang yun, okay. Pero this time, daughter niya. Okay? Alam niyo, when I read this, I am not, a, a bit, I'm struggling. How, how can I preach this? How can I tell this that no, talaga nagbasa ako ng komentary, hindi ko alam paano ko gawa ng outline at instance, no? Actually, inaalam ko yung komentary ng ibang mga elders about this. But to me, this is like Jephthah. He was troubled of this. And this is really troubling. No, imagine mo ha, yung anak mo ay mamamatay dahil sa iyong a careless vow. No, I can say that this is a careless vow. He was careless because he was overwhelmed of the fable. No, yeah, sabi dito sa verse 37, and she said unto her father, let this be done for me. Let me, uh, uh, sa verse 36, and she said unto him, my father, If thou hast opened thy mouth unto the Lord, do to me according to that which is proceeded out of thy mouth. No? For, ma- for as much as the Lord hath taken vengeance for thee of thine enemies, even of the children of Ammon. And she said unto her father, Let this be done for me. Let me alone two months that I may go up and down upon the mountains and bewail my virginity and my fellows. Sabi niya, Father, yung anak niya, syempre, sinayar niya sa anak niya eh. Trouble siya. Nung sinayar niya, her daughter comforted her. Sabi niya, Father, comforted him. 
father of gang wag ka matrobo no kaya gawin mo kung ano ang sinabi mo sa Panginoon okay to pa rin mo kung ano yung pinangako mo sa Panginoon pero sabi niya give me two months that I may be well for my virginity kasi di ba wala pa siya, di pa siya nagkakasawa, di pa siya nagkakaanak, hindi pa nga siya naka, wala siya experience. Sabi niya, two months, I will mourn for my virginity. Siyempre, mumourn niya na yun, na hindi, hindi man siya naka, hindi siya makaka-experience magkaanak, magkaasawa, magkapamilya. And she will die later on. No? Parang, dati parang, I was troubled because in the history of Israelites God no, allowed this kind of situation that yung kanyang uh, servant ay mag exercise ng human sacrifice. Okay, yung ibang commentaries yung sabi nila that Uh, hindi naman talaga human sacrifice yung ginawa ni Jephtha kasi uh, di ba it's just, it's like the woman in babae was never allowed to marry that's why he mourned for her virginity so yun ang ibang komentary na hindi talaga siya sinacrifice talagang hindi na lang siya pinag-asawa that's why pinag-mourn mun minorn mo na yung virginity but very clear yung vow ni yung vow ni yung vow ni Jepta is burn of the ring malinaw yun sa verse 31 sabi niya and I will offer up it for a burn offering how can you burn offering kung hindi mo siya papatayin hindi mo siya tusunukin diba so that is uh, kumbaga alibay na lang yun eh that interpretation is at hiding what is really happening. Mga kapatid, it is a sad, it is a struggling vow. That, ito yung question ko eh. This is my question also, even to other elders. Sabi, uh, pwede yung sabi, why the Lord did not enter here? If it's not God's will. No, kasi kay Abraham, si Abraham, ano eh? ba? Diba? Ang Panginoon kasi ang nag kay Abraham. Abraham, give me your child. Offer to me your child. Ano? A, a test of faith. A test of faith. Pinatay, papatayin niya talaga yun. Nakita na pa yun, papatayin niya talaga. The Lord interfered. Abraham, no. I have prepared for a burnt sacrifice. Kaya nga sabi niya, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. But this time, hindi, hindi nag-interfere ang Panginoon. And, and it came to pass, sa verse 39, at the end of two months, that she returned unto her father, who did with her according to his vow, which he vowed. Pag sabi niya, di, ginawa talaga. Okay? So, talagang, what a sorrowful, what a troubling to a father no, and make your child your only daughter as a burnt sacrifice because you vow unto the Lord. So, this is the example of a serious vow. No? On the other hand, this may be a careless vow. Kaya, but when we vow, we have to very, very careful we cannot vow the impossible thing. Diba? Mangangako ka, tapos hindi mo kayang tuparin. When you vow, it is doable. When you vow, you have to do it. You cannot vow an, an undoable vow. ba? Diba? Kasi pag hindi mo tinupad yung vow mo, you sin against God. Ay ano, when you vow, mahirap yung mag-vow ka, 
Tapos yung gagawin mo ay kasalanan din. That's not. This is a careless vow. Kasi kasalanan pumatay. Tapos kasalanan hindi to marahin. To marahin yung vow. But when Josh, when Jephthah vow, he did not vow specifically that he will offer his child. Nakuha niyo po? Hindi niya pinangako na, Lord, pag nanalo kami, I will sacrifice my daughter. No. Sabi niya, the first, yung pupunta sa, hindi niya kagustuhan yun eh. No. Kaya lang, hindi niya na meditate ng mabuti na, what if asawa ko yung kumungat sa akin? Kasi into my house, how can you expect that in the front, in the door of your house, na mayroong tupa na pupunta dyan, na mayroong keeper na pupunta dyan. Diba? O kaya ipis. Paano yung ipis yung unang mag-approach sa'yo? Diba? It's a very uh, careless vow, brethren. Nakuha niyo po. This is a lesson. We cannot hide this. This is the truth. That at instance, No, a, a man of valor, a despised man, is now being in the spotlight, and because of overwhelming situation, they careless, he carelessly bow, and now he is bound to commit or to fulfill his vow, because if he cannot fulfill it, he is sinning before God, and when he's doing, he is again sinning. Naipit na siya sa situation. But, nakita mo dito yung, yung family ni Jephthah. Na yung kanyang anak is willing to give her life to help her father. To comfort is her father. No. Alam niyo, alam niya, alam nung anak na susoro yung tatay niya dahil faithful ang tatay niya sa kanyang pangako sa buhay. <clears throat> uh, parang si Jesus Christ no uh, paano pa natin sabihin we cannot really uh, per- we cannot perfectly uh, compare God the Father to His Son that He gave His only begotten Son the, the Father did not offer His Son to us the Father did not offer His Son as a sacrifice. He did not offer it. But Christ volunteered as an offering. He volunteered His offering and the Father accepted. Pag sabi accept, in-acknowledge niya, tinanggap niya yung volunta, volun, pag-volunteer. Hindi, the Lord, the Father did not push Jesus Christ to die for us. Hindi niya po pinush. Hindi niya tinula. Hindi niya inutusan na mamatay ang kanyang anak. But the, but the son volunteered. He offered himself because he is the only one and nothing can do sacrifice in order for us to be justified. This time, No, the sorrow can be mas comforting sa side ni Jepta na ang bag- ng kanyang anak ay susuportahan siya. Even the cost, it cost her life. Grabe, di ba? No? Na kahit yung kanyang sarili ay uh, mamatay. Mamat- uh, ibigay niya. So, makita nyo mga kapatid. It came to pass at the end of two months that she returned unto her father who did with her according to his vow which he had vowed. And she knew no man. And it was a custom in Israel. Alam nyo, yung custom in Israel, ito yung medyo ano po, naging custom na ba ito? Para sa Israel. Uh, maybe ang custom dito na sinasabi ay itong sa verse 40 sabi dito that the daughters of Israel went yearly to lament the daughter of Jephthah in Gileadite the Gileadite four days in a year naging custom na sa Israel 
na every year the people Israel uh, ano the people Israel lament for four days at naging custom yon taon taon four days naglalament sila dahil sa pagkamatay ng anak ni Jeff so this is a, a a kind of example that a vow is serious unto God. No? And when you vow, you have to be careful of your vow. Do not be carelessly vow. And when you vow, you have to fulfill it. Because if you did not fulfill it, you sin before God. No? So, mga kapatid, <clears throat> Nandito uh, yung mga uh, nakikita nyo, no? That a despised person with a, a man of words. No? Even he is a despised person, he is a man of words. He is a despised person, but he is a leader. He is a warrior. He is a father. So, I hope we, we got something from Jephthah. Not the bad side, but a thing that will uh, edify and exhort you as a person, or as a believer, or as a servant. Okay. And you, I pray that we have the lesson that we got. Now, I mean, now I may have a lesson in the Life, serving the Lord is serious, mga kapatid. It's not a joke. It's not a playtime. It is serious to serve the Lord. Naraming bagay, pwede natin sabihin natin na uh, easy lang. Pero yung paglilingkod sa Panginoon, dapat hindi siya playtime. Because the Lord uh, life, buhay ang nakakita <coughs> ang puhunan siya ng Panginoon sa atin okay. so nawa ay uh, may natutunan tayo at uh, tayo ay nakapagunin mo dito sa isang mga so stand at the school dear God in heaven thank you for this Moment for the lessons.